Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob, and in this video, we're going to be learning how to use web workers to prevent this problem. I just clicked this button, and the video froze, and the user interface froze. Oh, and there it just finally loosened up. When I click this button, it's um, my script is executing a computationally expensive operation. In this case, it's actually just an infinite loop for five seconds. But um, it's executing something, for example, your um, your web app might have, you know, a, a large web request to make or some complex calculation that it has to do, and that could potentially freeze up your user interface or prevent your scripts from running, something like that, and that's really terrible for user experience. You could, you could lose business, you know, lose visitors to your website, who knows? But when I do the same thing, click the with worker button, it's executing the exact same code, but the video never freezes, and the button never freezes, and that is the power of web workers. So let's get started. All right, so this is our HTML file, pretty basic. Um, basically, I just have a, a video here that is auto-playing, looping, and is muted, and a link to our JavaScript file. That's, that's it. Okay, um, in our JavaScript file, I've set up two buttons. Um, they're basically identical. And we set up click listeners here. Okay, so when I click each of these buttons, they're going to run the same piece of code, but one is going to do it without a web worker, so how we would normally do it, and one without. Now this, this piece of code, I'm just going to run an infinite loop for five seconds. Okay, so it, it's absolutely useless. I'm going to add a variable up here, constant delay equals 5,000, so that's milliseconds. And then we're just going to run our loop for that period of time. So I'm going to say um, our start time equals, and this is in our without worker button, our start time is performance dot now, okay? And end time is performance dot now. And now in between here, I'm going to say while performance dot now um, minus start is less than delay, just loop for that amount of time. It's absolutely useless, but um, it's to simulate a computationally expensive piece of code that we might have in our application that could possibly stall the user interface. So then I'm just going to say console.log end minus start, and it, that should be pretty much exactly 5,000 milliseconds. It might, might vary a little bit, um, but not too much. So I'm going to save this, and we'll jump over to our page here, refresh, and click our without worker button. And oh, the video just froze. Our interface is frozen. Oh, and it just finished up, and we get here 5,000. So obviously the problem is that the user interface freezes up. That is completely unacceptable. I mean, we can have computationally expensive processes running. Obviously you want to do optimization, but if you have something that is really expensive running, that is okay. It's just not really okay for your user interface to freeze up and for your web application to become completely unusable in the process. So that's where web workers come in. What, um, this web worker is going to allow us to do is kind of delegate the um, computationally expensive operation to a separate, it's almost like it's running in a separate thread. I'm not exactly sure what's going on behind the scenes, but it doesn't block the user interface because it's running. It's effectively, um, it, it's a process of its own. It's running by itself and it doesn't um, lockups or something in the worker don't affect the user interface at all. So let's create our worker here. I have this empty worker.js file, um, and we'll create this worker by saying constant worker equals new worker. And that's a logical name. And then we give it the path of our worker file, which is worker.js. Okay, that's pretty easy. Now, 
um, with web workers, we can send information back and forth between the worker and our script. So this is our script, this is our worker, and we can send messages from the script to the worker and from the worker to the script. So when we click this button here, I'm going to say worker dot post message. We're going to send a message telling it how long to run a loop for. Okay, and that'll just be delay. So it'll always be 5,000 milliseconds. Okay, now our worker has just received a message. So I'm going to come over to our worker file, and we can say worker um, in our worker file this dot on message. So when it receives a message via the post message. Uh, function being called on it, um, we get this message. It's like an event object, effectively. Um, and it calls this function. Now, this event object has a property called data, and that's going to contain whatever we passed in. So we'll effectively contain the message if we want to um, generalize that. So I'm just going to say delay, just to clear it up. I'm going to say delay equals e dot data. So now delay here equals right here. Okay? So now I'm just going to effectively copy all of this code here and paste it into the worker like so. Um, but then instead of logging it, which we can do in a worker, um, console.log works just normally. It'll log it to the console and all that. But instead, I'm going to send a message back to this page uh, .js file. I'm going to send it back um, by saying this dot post message and that works almost the exact same as the post message over here does. Um, we just had have to add the on message event listener to the worker. So I'll say worker dot on message equals and then we get the event object and that's going to contain the data and in this case the data is going to be end minus start. So I'll just log that to the console, but I'll do it slightly different. See, differently. I'll say console.log um, worker says, and then put it in quotes, and we'll say e.data. Okay, there we go. Now I'll come over here, refresh this, and if I run it with the worker, we wait for five seconds, and it says worker says, 5,000, but the video never froze, our user interface never froze, like when we click the without worker button, see that's frozen, the video freezes, and then it finally loosens up. So there you go, that is how you can use a web worker to delegate computationally expensive operations to, it's almost like a separate process. It's very a very powerful tool that you can use to avoid locking up your um, your scripts, your your web page, your web app, whatever you're making. Anyways, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something from it. Don't forget to subscribe. My name is Jacob, and have a good one.